Ladies and gentlemen, hi, hello, good morning, and uh, good afternoon, actually, to some of you. We have people joining from all over the world. No kidding, I was just checking, and we have 1,400 representatives of 57 countries. How cool is that? Well, my name is Julia, and, um, well, obviously, I represent this uh, virtual world of the WN Hub. I'm going to be your host for the first part of the HTML5 Game Developer Day. Welcome. We hope that um, you know this HTML5 Game Developer Day can be a great starting point for those companies that are just discovering the HTML5 world, but also it can find it can bring more opportunities for already experienced companies. We have a great lineup of excellent speakers who will be sharing their knowledge with you during all day. And uh, they will tell you how to become successful with HTML5 games. Well, I personally hope that you will learn how to make greater apps and certainly how to make money. Our first speaker is from China. And uh, it's the technical director of Cocos. Uh, I believe you heard about this engine, right? And uh, he's going to tell us about new tools used for 3D games creation on HTML5. And he will also share examples of how it's getting easier to create these games on the web. Uh, I think we are ready to connect with our speaker. And um, Hua Bin, hi, how are you? Hi, Julia. I'm great. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Um, before we start, I have a question for you. Uh, yeah. Even though your name is Hua Bin, by the way, I am pronouncing it correctly. My Chinese is not so good. It's perfect. All right. So even though this is your name, I know that uh, your colleagues and friends often call you Panda. Is that right? Yeah, yeah exactly. That? People call me Panda here. Uh, I think it's because uh, in uh, it start from my middle school age, and uh, I think I just uh, sleep too uh, too less, and uh, I have a big uh, uh, I, I, uh, my eye is black, so they call me panda for that. Can I call you panda as well? Of course, of course. <laughs> Perfect. That's great. All right, then. Uh, well, uh, dear viewers, uh, if you have questions, uh, please do not hesitate to write them in the chat next to the streaming window, mm -hmm. and I will ask them after the presentation is over here on air. And uh, well, dear Panda, now it's over to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Um, hi, guys. Uh, very nice to see you again in Y9 event. Um, I'm Panda, so you can, um, I, I'm from Coast Creator Team. And today my topic is modern 3D rendering in mobile web. Hope you will enjoy it. Uh, this is the main content of my talk. I will share how we understand the modern 3D rendering with web technologies and how we design one. First of all, a very brief introduction about the current state in web graphics standard and its ecosystem. As I will take our practice in web rendering, for example, I'm going to give a little bit background about course creator. Then I will introduce how we implement our renderer to use the latest features and prepare for the future. At last, based on this renderer, what we can achieve in rendering and performance. There's a lot to cover. Let's get started. So what's the current state of web, web rendering? Um, this table just shows very basic information, but uh, this, the progression always makes me very excited. Back in 2004, Apple first introduced Canvas in WebKit. Then, as we all know, uh, HTML5 standard was released with official Canvas specification. At that moment, Canvas only supports simple 2D rendering. Then WebGL 1.0 was released in March 2011. That's really a big step for web rendering in, uh, with 3D support. WebGL 2.0 was uh, introduced in 2017 with a lot of new features on web. During this period, most modern browsers, including mobile version and iOS, has supported, uh, have supported uh, um, WebGL rendering. WebGL 2 is already very powerful, but in the past two years, 
we start to see that web GPU is going to be the future of web rendering. Its design is based on modern native rendering standard, including Vulkan, Metal, and Direct3D12, which gives the developer much more control on the GPU rendering pipeline. It's been actively developed for uh, since a few years and uh, making a lot of progression. It has great potential and will lead the web rendering to a whole next level. There's no clear timeline for you know, web GPU release yet, but I think we can expect a web GPU to be usable in maybe two years. As for the ecosystem, uh, the standard is just the base. GOTF as a web-oriented 3D model format is being widely supported by BCC tools like uh, 3ds Max, uh, Maya, Splendor, etc., etc. Also, a lot of 3D model repositories like Sketchfab uses and supports GOTF download. That means artists and developers can easily find or share their work with GOTF. And with game engines, developers can create great games working on WebGL-based runtimes, like browsers, in-app web views, and instant gaming platforms. What does that mean? Uh, web technologies have been expanded a lot more widely than the browser. Many apps have been uh, using web views to present content, like uh, Facebook and Twitter, and all kinds of uh, instant gaming platforms. Um, for example, WeChat, which is very popular in China. Uh, they are all using uh, WebGL rendering backend and the V8 JavaScript engine so that uh, uh, the web games can easily be ported to their platform. They, they, will, they, will be, uh, they, they will be more much more content. Here I will, um, uh, and also um, uh, there are many hybrid frameworks help build, uh, building web-based content to native apps. That's also kind of uh, WebGL runtime. Uh, so here I will give you some example of WebGL features that can help you create a high quality web content. The first one, GPU instancing, is for merging draw calls, which supports uh, uh, some material variations. You can pack different uniform values into an instanced uh, attribute uh, buffer. Then it's okay to draw objects into different color uh, with different colors or other um, configurations in the same draw call. It's supported on WebGL two and have an extension on WebGL one. Flow texture is also a fundamental feature for calculations in GPU. It supports to store flow point data data into GPU texture so that it can uh, be used as a sampler and perform calculations uh, with the shader uh, program. We are using it for both our skeleton animation and particle system. A transform feedback is an, uh, kind of an upgraded feature for GPU computer. It provides a dedicated GPU pipeline to do calculations in vertex shader and output directly a feedback buffer. Then the calculation result in the feedback buffer can be directly used in later rendering process. It's especially useful for large parallel uh, computations like, uh, uh, like particle system. However, it's an uh, experimental feature and lacks support on iOS device. At last, uh, compressed texture can greatly reduce uh, memory usage and loading time. If you want to use it, uh, you need uh, is it the format supported on different devices varies, so you need to take care of the compatibility issues. So it's all about performance, especially for games in web uh, web environment. We are still limited by JavaScript performance. Also, V8 can only run JavaScript in one thread. So um, in game content, it's uh, uh, really straightforward. Just to distribute more tasks from CPU to GPU especially highly parallel tasks. And WebGPU will uh, release even more power with more GPU comp computation capabilities like uh, computer shader. We are really looking forward to that. <clears throat> now to the um, uh, real world case. Based on web te technologies, we build a cross-platform 3D engine, Cox Creator. Uh, before we get into the beneath uh, rendering implementations, Let's first take a look at the games made with our engine and the overall de design of the engine. 
these games were made during beta test in China. It has been launched, the beta has been oh. The beta has been launched for a few months and most of the games are still carry and have carry games because it's been, um, it's really a short time and uh, the games are mostly developed in, in several weeks. Most games are also published in uh, WeChat Minigame, uh, but some of them are also published in App Store and uh, Google Play. <clears throat> so some of them are, are really nice. Huh? Not very complicated yet, but we, we surely have um, some partners are developing very complicated games. Okay, now into the game, uh, the engine design itself. Uh, our engine is 100% open source. You can find and fork our script engine and the native engine on GitHub. You can customize uh, any part of the engine uh, to fit your own need. The editor will build the game uh, using your game logic and customize the engine. You can literally control everything in your game package to, uh, for any platform. Our workflow also benefits from web technologies. The artists and the designers can work very closely on the scene and prefab, while developers uh, provide uh, behaviors via components. Uh, to preview the game content, you can use Chrome to instantly Wrong game and open up the powerful um, Chrome Dev Tools to debug. Then go back to the editor to improve your game, fix your bugs, and you don't need to compile or rebuild anything during development. At last, when you want to build to native platforms, you can um, just use our build uh, build tool to build to any uh, iOS or Android instantly. Uh, this sim seamless workflow helped our user to publish a cross-platform game in just one or two months. Now let's work a video of modifying an animation and preview the result in, uh, in the browser. You can see here is, there is a, a movement, uh, movement animation of the character. Uh, now I want to uh, add a bounce back feed uh, bounce back effect with our animation curve tool. I can preview it in the animation tool. And I thought maybe at a, a scale, a scale animation would be make it more vivid. So let's squeeze it, squeeze the character a little bit. You can see here, you can edit the um, data inside the animation tool. You don't need to jump out to the inspector. It's very uh, intuitive. Okay, so now we can see the result. There is a little bit of squeeze effect. Then we can preview it in the browser with uh, real game logics. Okay, just a slow motion to show you uh, more clearly. Okay. <clears throat> To wrap up, uh, Course Creators, my advantage is the following, 100% open source. You can control all source, uh, source code in your game package. Development with TypeScript uh, is almost the fastest way to code uh, game logic. The web-based workflow uh, is much easier uh, and than other native platforms. At last, to build cross-platform games, you don't need to change any logic, it just works. After the brief introduction, let's dive into the main topic today, how we implement a modern uh, renderer on web. A little bit background. Uh, what I'm gonna talk about is our in-development full 3D version of Course Creator 
we have rewrote the whole rendering to target a full 3D game engine. Here is a preview, um, a, a overview of our uh, engine architecture. From bottom, bottom up, it's a platform level, uh, rendering backends, as up level engine modules. Upon the engines, the developers construct a game with assets and logic. Let's take a deeper view into the render design. We already support many graphics backend. It's for the best compatibility consideration. On web, we support both WebGL 1 and WebGL 2, so that all modern browsers can run the game. But with WebGL 2, the game will run much faster. Uh, WebGPU support is also on our, our roadmap. As we already support Vulkan and Metal backend, it won't be hard to support WebGPU. They have a lot of design in common. The GFX module uh, is a wrapper level to adapt all graphics backend and provide a unified graphics APIs to our up-level renderer. Uh, and uh, the API is uh, based on, it's very close to Vulkan's API design. Uh, our render pipeline and uh, all renderer related modules can share the same code base and benefit from uh, benefit more on uh, modern backend like uh, Vulkan. Because the general engine design is to trying to release the power of modern graphics APIs and adapt to the older graphics backend. This leads to the next slide, how we can ensure everything works fine in older backend. Uh, for example, uh, for WebGL1, the, it's through the adaptation level GFX WebGL1 to be more um, to be more precise. Uh, we can take a look at our render pipeline and uh, its data flow. The right part of the graph from render pipeline to render stage is a co-render uh, co render process. Other elements at the left are data-related objects. When we start to render a scene, all models in the scene will be passed into the render pipeline. Uh, after scene calling, the render flow will start a render parse. Then it will pass all called uh, submodels to the render stage, where well, all, um, all render information will be extracted. That means the uh, input assembler and the pipeline state in command buffers. Each command buffer corresponds to a subpass. The input assembler uh, defines the geometry of the model. Pipeline state defines the GPU state uh, related st uh, GPU state related setups, uh, including shaders, UBO, depth stencil state, etc., etc. Now the interesting part is that all yellow elements, command buffer, pipeline state, input assembler, render parse, subpass, all of them are built in in Vulkan, but absent in WebG WebGL. Uh, what we have done in GFX WebGL is to implement these types using GL basic, uh, uh, GL ba basic commands so that we can safely use them in the renderer. Uh, the API adaptation is only part of the story. Shaders also need to be ported because the uh, backends use different shading languages. Here's how we solve it. A user just write their shader in GLSL's 300 ES format. During publish process, the editor will translate the um, shader to GLSL 100 to be used in older backend. And then with Spur V tools, we can compile GLSL to Spur V format so that it can run on Vulkan and WebGPU. At last, we need to we need the, the Spur V cross to compile Spur V format to metal shading language for Apple devices. It seems very complicated, but at least it permits user to write one unified shader and run on all platforms. All the explanations seems very abstract. I just want to show you some examples so that you can see uh, what we can achieve in web rendering. Again, all the following examples are implemented in Cospirator 3.0. Firstly, our engine is designed for physically based uh, rendering. The light is based on physical metrics, color temperature, and light power. So when the artists set up the environment, they can uh, refer to the real world metrics to simulate sunlight, candle, or other type of lights. We currently support directional light, uh, directional light uh, sphere light, and spotlight. The camera is using SBS exposure, 
with configurable aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. This will let you uh, simulate a real-world camera very easily. After set up uh, different configurations, you can see the result instantly in the game preview panel. <clears throat> yeah. Um, also, uh, the, uh, with the standard PBR, our physically based material, we can have very nice and realistic uh, rendering results. Physical, physically based rendering is implemented mainly in the uh, shader. So no JS logic uh, with, chip, uh, with uh, CPU heavy lifting here. Even mid to low end devices today can run it smoothly. Secondly, we are trying to use uh, more GPU computing, uh, computing capacity to improve the performance. For example, our skeletal animation is running with uh, GPU skinning calculation. Models and animations can also be merged into one draw call uh, with the GPU instance. Here is uh, uh, at most 1,000 uh, um, instance, which runs on um, iPhone 7 Plus. Uh, at, uh, 10, at 30, almost 30 FPS, the draw call is only 10. Um, five draw calls for the UI and five draw calls for the models and animations. <clears throat> and our GPU um, uh, particle system is also using uh, GPU to run the simulation. The left side video is running uh, CPU particle system. The FPS drops very rapidly while uh, at the right is GPU particle system. At 100 G, uh, GPU particle system, uh, an iPhone 6S Plus can still run at uh, 48 FPS. It's quite, uh, um, quite enormous. Okay, both GPU uh, instance, the scatter animation and the GPU particle system support all platforms, including WebGL1. Let's take a scatter animation as example to see how we adapt to all kinds of devices. The animation clip data and the uh, skeleton data here will be extracted and stored into GPU-related buffers. Animation clip uh, will be pre-baked into joint texture, which is using flow texture on WebGL2, and on WebGL1, uh, we will pack the flows into RGBA8 uh, textures. Uh, we are using two channels for a float. Then we won't need to calculate perform data in CPU uh, we only need to extract them from the joint texture in Vertex Shader. As for instancing support, we are using Angle Instance the Aries extension on WebGL1. It's widely supported. The blue blocks, uh, joint animation info and joint uh, texture info is uniform, but uh, on uh, devices which support uh, uh, either WebGL2 or WebGL1 with extension, uh, we will pack it into an instance the attribute buffer, then during runtime, different skinny models, uh, model of models with uh, uh, the same skeleton, mesh, and material can be merged into one draw call, even if they are running different animations or in different animation states, that doesn't matter because they are in uh, instance the attribute. Last but not least, our compressed texture support uh, is built in our editor and very easy to use. You can, uh, you can just use different preset setups in the, uh, as shown in the left panel. And uh, in each one of them, configure different format and their priorities. It's in the right panel, uh, right side panel. And in uh, runtime, we will check the environment support for uh, different compressed texture formats and use the most preferred format. Uh, these are all automatic. You just need to configure it uh, one time in for, for, for the whole project. And uh, after build, uh, we, will, we will build the compressed texture and we will use the const uh, compressed texture uh, for the right one for your devices. So uh, here comes to the conclusion of my talk today. Uh, there are still a lot of details that I can't fill into the talk today. I only revealed a small part 
uh, about the powerful web rendering technique and uh, the bright future. But at least I, I hope uh, these measures, messages can be spread uh, through this talk. First, uh, based on WebGL2 uh, and the GLTF, we can uh, really build uh, uh, amazing web content. WebGPU will extend uh, web rendering to the next generation. Cocos Creates 3.0 has a future-ready architecture for the web and uh, cross-platform game development. Oh, one more thing. Uh, our Cocos Create V3.0 tech preview will be available this summer for, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, we really hope more developers can join us to test this great engine. And we will try our best to reach your uh, expectations and help you create amazing web, web games. Thank you. Thank you very much, Huabin. Uh, that was very informative. And um, congratulations on the launch, which is going to happen soon, I hope, uh, because it's what? It's the middle of the summer, right? So it's going to be really soon. Um, yeah, yeah. Are you going to uh, offer some kind of a beta first so people could try it before like, the final release? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, so what do you mean? The data? The beta, beta version of uh, Cocos Creator 3. Oh, the tech preview is before the, uh, the beta. Tech preview uh, is essentially the uh, whole rewrote engine. Uh, so it, it will not be uh, fully compatible with the V2, uh, v v2 version. Uh, we just want to show people or what uh, our 3D engine looks like, what uh, uh, features in 3D is um, we can provide. And uh, then later we will provide the beta version, a public beta test for the, for the whole world. Okay, so sounds really cool. Good luck with that. Um, we have a couple of questions from uh, the viewers. Uh, so the first one was uh, for, from uh, Vladimir. Uh, he's asking, what is the advantage uh, of working with Cocos uh, in comparison to Unity, Unreal Engine, uh, and other engines uh, that have uh, full documentation and a large community? Yeah, uh, it's true that we are a new newborn engine, and uh, uh, no, Cocos Creator have been developed for, uh, since uh, several years, uh, but our 3D version is a newborn engine. Uh, compared to Unity and Unreal, we, uh, there are a lot of features and the workflows uh, to be improved to catch up. But uh, we still have our advantage. We can publish our, your game to, um, to the web, for example, and to uh, all kinds of uh, um, web-based runtime, uh, exam for example, the instant gaming platforms in China. And um, uh, also, Unity can, can publish web version, but it's uh, through WebAssembly and it's using their uh, new tiny mode. It's, it's basically a new engine. So I think we are, we are equal here. And uh, uh, our workflow is based on web technologies. Uh, it's very smooth. Uh, you can test and develop your, your game very quickly. It's also simpler and easier to use uh, uh, compared to Unity, which is targeting high-end uh, market. And they are designing a lot of features for AAA games. Um, I think it's uh, it's not easy for them to uh, also take care of uh, a lot of uh, like uh, Carol games or mid core games uh, developers. So we are doing. Uh, we want to do. We want to do a better job on that. And also, we are fully open sourced compared to Unity. You maybe you you can't control the whole thing. Uh, with Cocos, you can control everything in your game package. It's really totally free. Okay. Yeah. okay uh, and also we are free. It's free, 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 free for charge. That, that's a very good advantage, I would say. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, is Cocos more popular in China rather than in the rest of the world so far? Yes, uh, I can say that because we, uh, we do have better support in China uh, for now, but uh, we are really pushing our effort to, uh, to have a global community. We, 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 have, we have one with Cocos 2DX. Uh, now we are uh, doing our, we are working hard, working very, very hard to, uh, to bring all the products to overseas market. 
and uh, to support our overseas uh, developers. So, uh, well, yeah, we you're yeah. Yeah. you're doing it now with uh, you speaking at our global event. Uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned, people from so many countries. So thank you so much for your presentation. And uh, there are more questions, but unfortunately, we don't have more time. Okay. So please go to WN Hub. Uh, we have a speakers chat a Q and A session uh, in the chat section and. Uh, our dear viewers, please go there and ask uh, who have been questions and uh, we'll really appreciate it if you answer them uh, in writing, all right? Okay, okay, great. Thank you so much. It was so great to have you. Thank um, you, Julia. Have a nice day. You too. All right, so...